I've been a continuous cruiser for coming up to five years now. And in the beginning, things were complicated sometimes, but overall, they were a lot more simple than they seem to be today. This year, we've seen more changes in this sort of lifestyle than we've seen in the previous years that we've lived on board. So I'll go through some of those changes on the cruise today. But it's made us reevaluate and think about this lifestyle and question whether or not continuously cruising on a narrowboat is worth it anymore. Okay, so what do we know? We know that the first thing is there's gonna be a lack of funding going forward. We don't know exactly how that's going to impact on the system but what we do know is that the system as it stands today is going to have to reduce in some way without huge sponsorship deals or donations which doesn't seem likely at the moment. So our network system is going to change And we also know, very recently, that as continuous cruisers on the system, we are going to have to pay an additional fee on top of our standard license. Basically, what it means for us is by the end of year five, with the slow increases of 5%, we'll be paying 25% of the license fee plus 25% inflation, which means we're paying for a license plus half a license in five years. But if you're a wide beam, you're going to be paying your license fee plus the inflation, which means basically two licenses, but for one boat. So, in effect, what this means is, going forward, we're gonna to have to pay more for less. it makes you think it's inevitable that you're going to re-evaluate and that's what we've been doing, re-evaluating and in order to do that we have to think okay, why did we choose this continuous cruiser's lifestyle on an narrowboat to start with? really was about having more time to appreciate and enjoy the life that we've got so that's definitely the same that's not going to change going forward because this lifestyle does offer us more time
and legend has it that the railway track ended up at the bottom of the English Channel after being dispatched to the front line in the Great War. Another thing why we chose this lifestyle is because we wanted to explore different places and travel. So travel has played a huge part in this lifestyle and we're still going to be able to travel. We don't know if there's going to be less system to travel in but we are still going to have a canal to travel in and we will travel in all those canals that are open and up and running and able for us to travel in. We're at the next lock. about this life is the ability to try and be more sustainable to reduce our carbon footprint and yes yeah, ready and even though we've still got a long way to go on that we definitely live more sustainably than we did before so generating the electricity with solar panels reducing the amount of water we use I, I even I've tried very hard to put HVO, hydro treated vegetable oil in the tank. I want that to be more readily, readily available. At the moment, it's so difficult. I should do a vlog about that actually. Also, we're really conscious of the amount of waste we generate and we try to reduce that. Because, you know, quite often, we might be a week, maybe even more, because you know, we move slowly until we get to the next service station so we do reduce the amount of waste as continuous cruises you really have to think about that I think this is narrowboat Janus I know you're going up and down on I know! I don't want to walk. Oh my god! It's now about Janus. We've been on their three months. I mean, they're starting this life. I don't know how people who've just got a narrowboat feel to start their life as continuous cruisers and then be hit with all these changes. It must feel disorientating, but I say, just look at why you did it, and if you can still say, yes, I can still do those things, then, you know. It's about finding that extra bit of money, isn't it? So you might be able to hear the M40 in the distance. And it's really remarkable that even though there's a motorway, just literally, we're gonna be going under it in a minute. We are surrounded by this wonderful landscape of nature and leafy trees, birds singing. There's the buzzard near the motorway. Where's it gone? Beautiful older catkins. Above my head. It's so beautiful. I've just seen something amazing. I'm just gonna get the lock ready and then I'll show you. It's amazing. I read that one of these mushrooms within 48 hours pushed up a paving slab by four centimeters. They're incredible. What a beautiful mushroom. Because of the amount of time you spend outdoors when narrow boating, there's more opportunities to spot wonderful things like that. And honestly, it's my favorite thing about this sort of life. then is the biggest question is the extra money and affordability I know there's gonna be a lot of other people out there 
who chose this lifestyle initially because they couldn't afford to rent, definitely couldn't afford a mortgage, they couldn't afford to pay for marina fees and so this offered them a chance to have a home and to go to work. If you are a boater who's struggling and you're really worried about how you're going to meet these additional costs, then on the Canal and River Trust website, there's a link of telephone numbers that offer support. As well as that, there's a link to the Water Chaplain Service, which offer additional support and guidance. And I'm going to put all those numbers in the description of my vlog. What's the verdict then? Well, with the additional costs, and the reduction in the water system, that's what it looks like anyway, is continuously cruising on a narrow boat still worth it anymore? Hello, doggy. <laughs> Wild fender this year, look. It's having its own mini water. We just think there's too much to lose if we don't. And so we're going to tighten our belts, work that extra bit harder to find that additional money so we can carry on continuously cruising. Okay, let's get the angle right. Birmingham. Oh, this morning spot will do me just fine. I think there's a fox behind that tree. It's just holding the boat and I'm sure, I'm sure I saw the fox's tail. Today in my narrowboat galley, I am going to have a go at making something natural and delicious for my armpits. I want to say a big thank you to Annie Mack. Annie has sent me a recipe for how to make this deodorant, which she uses all the time. And no, she hasn't met me in person, so she's not actually thinking that I need to use this deodorant, but she's just recommended it to me. So I'm going to have a go at making it. It's really simple, simple ingredients. And wow, if I can use it every day and get good results, I'm not going to ever buy another deodorant again. These are the three ingredients, coconut oil, bicarbonate of soda and arrowroot. That's it. So first of all, I've got to sieve the dry ingredients and that is the arrowroot and the bicarb. So I've got to sieve those first. So I'll put in the same amount. Now you add the coconut oil and that's three tablespoons. One. Three. Mash them together. Give it the final mix. All you literally do is you take um, it on your finger and then you rub it on your armpits. I'm going to save you that shot. You don't really want to see me doing that. Um, I'm going to save that, and I, but I'll let you know how it goes. Right, where are we this morning? Well, we have walked, Safra and I, along the canal. Then we turned right down 
rising path or rising road, something like that. And we've ended up at Battersea Clinton, not by accident. I wanted to come here. So let's explore Battersea Clinton. Seth has to stand a lead because the animals roam free here. Should be fine with them, but I just wouldn't ever risk it. We're gonna walk through sheep, Seth. This estate has homed many, but I'm going to tell you about Nicholas Brome. He killed his father's murderer in 1471 in a duel, and when his mother passed away, he and his wife inherited the estate. As part of his estate-owning rights, he appointed himself a priest. Well, one day when he came home unexpectedly, he found the priest stroking his wife under the chin in the parlour, and once again he took out his sword, and this time he killed the priest. He raised the roof of St Michael's Church and Packwood House Church as his penance, but he forever lived humbly and full of sorrow. So much so that he requested on his death that he be buried standing up underneath the church porch so that everyone who entered stepped on his head. Color of this green elf cup is unbelievable. Right, honeycomb coral slime mold. Let's have a closer look. It looks like coral on a log. It looks like a piece of ice. Oh, and there's this. Oh, oh, is that a springtail? Let's see. Lots of uh, insects enjoying this. Okay, here, yeah, closer look at that. Oh, it looks like a little springtail. Just to let you know, the deodorant thing's going really well. Yep. <laughs> Autumn takes your hands softly, as soft as the thickening fleece on the spring sheep. Her chilly whispers hush stilly, soothing summer to its sleep. She blows the slows and rose hips, so they glow warm light along the lane. Leaves twist around her whistly lips, like flames they flick along trees' mane. Her scent is smoke and mushroom, toasty tendrils tickle throat and tongue, and the bitter change is coming soon. Mulch buried deep in toadstool lung. Keep them beneath your booted feet as you walk with autumn by your side and save a change as if a sweet. Keep slow in step and open-eyed. <laughs> 